This will change how you think about mathematics forever, for the rest of your life. If you are watching this video and you are in a calculus class or an algebra class or a stats class or a class that does not require mathematical proofs, let me just say that you actually don't know, and, 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 I'm, and I wanna be mean, but you don't know how amazing math can actually be. And I'm saying that in, in the most sincere way because when I was in calculus, I loved mathematics, especially calculus two, the infinite series. That really was the game changer for me. When I, when I studied infinite series, I learned all the series tests. I loved the little justifications, the little mini proofs. Enter the world of proof writing. Proof writing will completely change the way you think about mathematics because once you know how to write proofs, you can do anything. You are unstoppable. A proof is a logical argument, right? So you're, you're basically taking your pencil and you're taking you know, a piece of paper and you're writing down a logical argument. You're, you're justifying something. When you prove something in mathematics, it is true, okay? It is true and no one can say it is not true, right? In the real world, it's not so black and white. Mathematics is just yes or no, right? There's, there's no in between. And that's one of the things that's so beautiful about mathematics. Human beings can look at it and say, here we have logic, here we have reason, right? And in this abstract form, the world of mathematics. So how do you learn to write proofs? Well, you can do it on your own, right? You can. It's very, very hard. I'm, I'm not gonna, you know, it's, it's hard, okay? It's very tough. People oftentimes study math and, and they get to these proof writing classes and they can't do it. And, and so they change their majors. And, and that's fine, it's, it's not for everyone, right? But I think if you pick up one of these books, and these are all really inexpensive, and this one is free, okay, this one is free, you can actually learn proof writing on your own. And if you actually can do that, you can get a math degree. My view is that, you know, what do you get from getting a math degree? Well, you take a bunch of classes, right? You know, calculus, statistics, advanced calculus, abstract algebra, topology, maybe some number theory, some differential equations, complex analysis, some proof writing, discrete math, graph theory, combinatorics, so many cool subjects, right? But what do they all have in common? Proof writing. So you basically learn to write proofs, right? And then you go to graduate school and it just gets a lot harder. <laughs> so, so let's just take a quick look at some of these books. I'm just gonna talk about each one of these. Let's start with this one, because this is one I haven't talked about too much. And so I bought this one because I had a professor who for me was the greatest professor I ever had in my life. And he recommended this book. And so I thought, well, Maybe I should buy it. And I didn't buy it. I didn't buy it. I, I bought a different book. I just gotta give it a whiff here. My copy doesn't smell so good. I don't know why it smells like chemicals. Anyways, <laughs> How to Read and Do Proofs by Daniel Solis. So I bought it and I've read small portions of it. It's really good. I've talked about it maybe once or twice here on the channel, not, not often. And I do recall um, some people here on the channel, you know, making some positive comments about this book. So. It is a good book. Um, it's got some cool stuff. Let me show you something in particular that I like from this book. Like a particular thing that's in the book. Uh, something I read uh, a while ago, so I gotta find it. It's been a while since I've looked at this book. That's what makes this video kind of fun. No, I don't think it's here. I know it's here. Basically, he's talking about uh, mathematical proofs. And there's a, there's a point in, in the book, I think this is, this is the book, where he says that you know, every definition is an if and only if statement. And we're thinking, oh, oh, well, yeah. Yeah, finally someone says it, so thank you, you know? Let me see if I can find it in this book. Because I think it's this book, and now I'm, I'm uh, it is bothering me. Here we go, here we go. I think that's, I think it's here. I think it's right at the beginning. I think it's here, let's look, let's look. A definition in mathematics is an agreement by all parties concerned as to, the as to the meaning of a particular term. You have already come across a definition in chapter one. There, the statement A implies B was defined and hence agreed to be true in all cases except when A is true and B is false. Nothing says that you must accept this definition as being correct. If you choose to, if you choose not to, then we will be unable to communicate regarding this particular idea. That's right, Mr. Daniel Solo. So cool. I don't know if this is where he says that, but anyways, I'm pretty sure that um, this was the book or maybe it was another one. In any case, 
wonderful book on proof writing. Recommend it. It's a soft cover. I don't know if a hard cover exists. I've had it for a, I've had this for a while. I've had it for a while. We'll come back, we'll come to this one last. I'm gonna save the best for last. This is this is my favorite one out of all three. If you have to pick one, I, I, they're all great. Buy all of them, but if you can't afford all of them, get this one. So we're gonna leave that one for last. This one's free, right? And it's excellent. Okay, so it's an extremely good book for free. Um, I bought it uh, on Amazon. I'll leave a link. Book of Proof. This is the second edition by Richard Hammett. So this one, got to give it a whiff. Let's take a look at the topics in this one. And the copyright here is 2013 Richard Hammett uh, under the Creative Commons Attribution No Derivative Works 3.0 license. I don't know what that is, but I've heard of it. Basically means that there's some rules if you like if you do something to the book. I think like if you use the book <clears throat> sets. Logic, counting, so very, very basic, okay? We didn't look at the topics in Solo. We can do that later, maybe. And so look here, how to prove conditional statements of so direct proofs, contrapositive proofs, proof by contradiction. So the way it's broken up is quite nice. And then here's, here's some more topics. Here we go, what's this say here? In writing this book, I have been motivated by the desire to create a high quality textbook that costs almost nothing. Yeah, it's awesome, right? Right. The book is available on my web page for free. And the paperback version, produced through an on-demand press, costs considerably less than comparable traditional textbooks. Any revisions or new additions will be issued solely for the purpose of correcting mistakes and clarifying exposition. New exercises may be added, but the existing ones will not be unnecessarily changed or renumbered. Good. Yeah. This text is an expansion and refinement of lecture notes I developed while teaching proofs courses over the past 14 years. That's a long time. This guy is a master at Virginia Commonwealth University, Large State University, and Randolph-Macon College, small liberal arts college. Yeah, guys are pro. I found the needs of these two audiences to be nearly identical. Yep. They're identical for every human being, right? And I wrote this book for them, but I am mindful of a larger audience. I believe this book is suitable for almost any undergraduate, yeah, or any person watching this video, right? Really, it is, it is. This second edition incorporates many minor corrections and additions that were suggested by readers around the world. Yeah, wow, wow. What, 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 what a preface, right? It's like a, uh, I don't know what the word is, manifesto, I don't know, just what a great book. Um, it's gotta smell it. Thank you, Richard Hammett, for this gift to the world. And this book does have, it does actually have, look at the back, it's got some answers, right? solutions to some of the proofs. So that is extremely helpful uh, when you are learning to write proofs. So very, very helpful. Be our back. Just gonna turn the uh, turn the heat on. It's getting cold in here. And then, um, oh, let's really quickly look at the topics in the solo, so you can see those. <clears throat> so a little bit different. The layouts are all a little bit different. Okay. And here's. Here's the other topics here. All right. So now I think what we should do is maybe take a look at uh, the last book, How to Prove It, A Structured Approach. So this one is my favorite book. I've talked about this book a lot. A um, couple things about this book. So first of all, I did not want to buy this book. Uh, I, um, I really resisted the idea because of the price. It, it's not expensive. I mean, I don't know what's expensive, right? Everyone has a different definition. I think it was like 30 something dollars. And I just didn't have a lot of math books, right? I have thousands. And you can see I have other proof books. I have, I have more than these. I, I have like three or four more besides these. So I thought, why do I need another one, right? Like I already know how to write proofs and I like writing proofs. Um, I'm decent at it, I, you know. And I bought it because people were like, oh, you should check it out. So I bought it because a lot of the subscribers here on the channel. And let me just say thank you. Right, I, I'm glad I sucked it up and caved in <laughs> to peer pressure. I don't know, it just like two or three people kept commenting about it and I was like, oh, oh, why do they keep talking about this book? And I was like, all right, so I just finally bought it. I was like, I'll buy it and I'll make a video. So I bought it, I remember laying in bed reading it thinking, wow, wow, these people, these, uh, these, these people on the internet were right. I can smell it again. So here's the topics. So why is it so great? It's because it's written well, right? That, that's really it, right? The explanations are, are, are really well done. Okay, there's some of the topics there. 
I feel like he tries to uh, he tries to explain he tries to explain things in more than one way. So, for example, let, let's just go. Let's find it right now. Let me just find the example. I'm going to go to the index. Oh, he to find uh, the example. So we're going to look for vacuous truth, page 68. <clears throat> Let's take a look at that. This is this is really this is this is gold. Okay, this is like you know you you can't find this right. Like this is extremely good teaching. That's what this is, right? In my view, this is. I, I would love to see how this guy actually teaches in a classroom because this book is just epic, getting goosebumps. And so here he goes through, and, and I, rec I recommend anyone who gets this book to really spend uh, a lot of time here. He goes through and he talks about uh, vacuous truths, right? Let's see, vacuously true. So I definitely recommend um, you read these explanations. and I think they're gonna, they're gonna change um, how you think about mathematics. Yeah, so like here, let's read this last part here. It says here, <clears throat> for all x and a, p of x is equivalent to the negation of the negation of for all x and a, p of x, double negation law. Yeah, that makes sense. Which is equivalent to the negation of there exist. Yeah, that makes sense because when you, when you negate the for all uh, quantifier, you get the existential quantifier, right? <clears throat> and then, yeah, and then you get that. Yep, yep, mm-hmm. That's correct, because that has to, yep. Quantifier negation law, yep. If A is empty, then this last formula will be true, no matter what the statement P of X is. Yep, because as we have seen, yeah, so so it's, it's just really good. So once you know some logic, you can read this, you would be like, oh yeah, and then you turn the page and he keeps going. He starts talking about unicorns. I mean, it's just amazing. It says here, <clears throat> as an application of this principle, let me just get some more light here so you can see. Sorry, it's dark here. There we go. Let's read this together. As an application of this principle, we just note that the empty set is a subset of every set. To see why, just rewrite the statement A subset of B in the equivalent form for all X and A, X and B. Now, if A is empty, then as we have just observed, this statement will be vacuously true. Thus, no matter what the set B is, the empty set is a subset of B. Here's a really good one. Another example of a vacuously true statement is the statement, all unicorns are purple. We could represent this by the formula for all X and A, P of X, where A is the set of all unicorns and P of X stands for X is purple. Right, it's a property, a property of X. Since there are no unicorns, A is the empty set, so the statement is vacuously true. Right? So all unicorns are purple is a vacuously true statement. Right, think about that. So, 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 yeah, it's uh, it's uh, it's pretty epic, right? It's pretty. And, and by the way, it's got great proofs. Okay, it's got it's got great proofs. This book is so exciting. Um, really good explanations. You know, the best proofs are, are are the ones that you write yourself. You know, when you when you sit down with a pencil and you know a notebook or a piece of paper, you start writing out proofs. The best proofs are the ones you write. Um, and I always think that it's harder to read someone else's proofs than write your own proofs. Kind of like programming, right? If someone gives you like 5,000 lines of code, <laughs> it's harder to look at that than write your own code. I mean, right? So at least for me it is. So I think it's, it's the same with math, right? If I look at a book and I see like a two-page proof, I'm like, oh my God, right? I got to go through all that. I'd rather try to prove it on my own and then, and then check my work. Um, and that's a better way because that way you're really, really grinding through it and really learning everything. Anyways, hopefully you've learned, hopefully you, you, you know about proof writing and uh, I'll leave links in the description. Check out my courses, they're on Udemy, uh, but I'll leave links in the description for those as well or my website, mathsorcerer.com. Learn to write proofs, it's worth it. Take care.